My Hobart handler welder just stops feeding wire sometimes, which is really frustrating and a common problem on these Hobart handler welders. I'm going to fix that this time on the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Welcome to the Burnouts and Rotor Blades YouTube channel. Let's go do something awesome. This welder has been a staple in my shop since I traded it for a 2002 Ford Taurus like seven years ago. Since then, it has helped me glue metal together without skipping a beat. But now, it started doing this thing where the wire speed slows down and eventually stops. I already made sure there was nothing wrong with the liner or stinger by disengaging the motor and pulling the wire. Everything seemed to move pretty smooth and free, so my next thought was the actual motor. No rhyme or reason for why this is slowing down. Uh, the whole it, the whole uh, sleeve is all brand new. The gears are tight. Uh, these are set properly. There's no restriction on this right here. So the only thing we're left with is that the drive motor itself could be bad. And unfortunately, it's a really common problem on these Hobarts I found out. There are some posts on various welding forums that had pretty good but fractured information, so I've done my best to compile it all here and show you what I did. The motor was pretty easy to take out, but it was much harder to find initially because the original motor is out of production. I initially downloaded the illustrated parts breakdown for this and tried to order the original motor, but there's an updated motor from Miller and that motor requires a new roller, which they also don't tell you. The real heartbreaker here is that the motor wasn't the real issue, but we'll get to that in a minute. Here are the two motors side by side, and the part number for the new one on the bag. Reinstallation was in reverse order of removal, and we'll come back to the wiring on this. If we look at the back of this one, we can see right here, it's got a red dot. If we look at the new one, the new one also has a red dot right here. That correlates with the red wire. At least I hope so. Just for testing purposes, it's temporary, permanently fixed. All right, no booms, no pops yet. That's good. Now I want to see this thing rotate this way. Winner, winner. For some reason, the new roller here didn't want to fit smoothly into the new motor. Don't do that. Oh, come on. So I had to do some precise machining before it slid into place. Now let's look back at that part where I talked earlier where the new motor didn't fix the problem. This is the moment I realized I needed to troubleshoot instead of just throwing parts at the issue. So back to the forums to read what the welding nerds say needs to be tested next. I've got the wires from the motor uh, that run up to this plug. I got my probe plugged in for that wire. So we're going to flip it on here. And we're going to see what happens to the voltage as I pull the trigger. drops down to less than a volt. We got something going on with the board. Well, I got on the internet and I did a little bit of Googling and, well, kind of messed with the circuit board here. Got my test lead and I jumped across the two PTC1 and it did make it run faster, but it was still like kind of intermittent. Um, so that didn't seem like that was the final fix to me. So uh, I dug a little deeper and apparently the speed controller on these is notorious for going bad. So I got on the internet and I ordered uh, a little kit that comes with the uh, transistor, the speed controller, another resistor. Comes with all the common things that go bad uh, in these. And now it's time to solder them in. It's the first time I've ever done that. So <sighs> now we just need to make sure that we are unplugged, which we are. Cool thing about having it on video is now I don't forget where 
everything went, hopefully. And this, this one down here has an eight on it and it goes to receptacle eight. So all the stock wiring is labeled for where it goes. In fact, this one says 11 and it says 11. That wasn't even that hard to take out except for the one that I forgot. This kit was about $15 on Fleabay and was specifically for this board. There are others that came with relays too, but I chose for this one because all the relays seem to work on mine. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this guy right here. And we're gonna replace it with this guy right here. In order to do that, we need to desolder the pins on the back side here. There was another option where I could send the whole board in and have a professional do everything I'm about to do for $140 or so, which, you know, in hindsight, probably a better option. Ah, got it. But then I wouldn't know how to wick solder out of a pole like this. Ha, ah, it worked. Heck yeah. We got two holes now. I've never done any work on a circuit board. In fact, the solder I'm using for it is plumbing solder because I couldn't find my small gauge solder until after I finished this project. And I've never used a solder wick, but with a little YouTube university from some wise nerds, a guy can learn to do just about anything. Now what I'm doing here is removing this rivet that holds on this transistor uh, to get it off so I can replace it with the new one. One trick I saw was to link all of the pins that needed desoldering with a common wire and solder so that they heat up as a group and with a little pressure on the component ha! to be removed now I can cheer. with a little bit of get, practice. Get out of there. Get out of there. This isn't your jam. Skip forward. Heck yeah for some other repair options, like replacing the entire board. But for now, we're gonna talk about how I made that solder wick, which is just some exposed wire twisted and smashed and filled with flux so that the solder, in theory, just flows off the board and into the wick. I had to work a lot harder to get the solder out of each hole, but it eventually worked, at least well enough. Now I'll put some heat paste on the back of this transistor and, you know, rivet it back in. Good enough. This 8-pin component was by far the most difficult component to replace. I will say, if I wasn't, you know, filming, it might have gone a little faster, but for the time and effort, it's probably worth either A, oh, yeah. sending Got this it. board off to a place that specializes in the repair of these boards or replacing the board. And I want to point out right now that I paid particular attention to when the other one came off, that little notch and that little circle was pointed that way. So that's the way the new one's gonna go in too. No idea if it matters or not, but not taking any chances. Getting a couple of tabs over so that it stays in place, some flux. I'm sure that there's probably a legitimate amount you're supposed to use and it's probably less than what I'm using, but you know, you can never have too much overkill. All right, so I'm gonna try to heat up the edge and the pin at the same time. That will look pretty well. Well, all right. Of course, I don't know what I'm doing, so there's always that. So we'll go ahead and trim up everything that we've done so far. The testing that we did earlier kind of showed that this was bad. Um, and then whenever I bypassed it, it was still kind of jumpy. So I feel like that was kind of to blame. Those are the two main failures that the instructions list. And uh, we'll see because I'm gonna try to go on uh, and test this guy. It's always good to happen, right? Still have something to take care of here. The big advantage is that if the repair company that repairs these boards uh, also tests them and verifies their operation and gives a warranty, it's kind of hard to beat that. I found one of these places in my Google searches, but since I didn't use any of their services or any services like this, I'll just stop at mentioning they exist. Well, that didn't work, so let's see if this guy off again. I was way too impatient to keep shotgunning parts at this circuit board, so I coughed up the nearly $400 on a replacement board, 
While it was fun to practice my soldering skills, I have other projects I'd rather spend my time on. This board came from the same website the repair components did, and I used the assembly number printed on the original board to search for the replacements, and replacements were not hard to find. With the new board in, it's time to get everything reassembled and move on to those other projects. I welded up the really long seam between two pieces of scrap 4 inch angle iron to construct a post for my new gate as a test for the full duty cycle. It proved my little Hobart welder was right back to its trusty self again. Awesome. Between the new circuit board and the repair components, I'm about $420 in and a couple hours of labor. Not too bad. This great barber was up next. Just got this thing installed and it looks awesome. It does exactly what I want. And then I moved on to the roof roof for my mini storage shipping container build. You can see both of those projects on my other YouTube channel. If you're interested, the link's up here in the corner. And if you like the content, do the subscribe button thing down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.